this video, I'm going to be talking about structure and why structure is so important in your daily walk with God. Without structure from God, you will be walking like you have no bones. You will be walking a path that has, you know, a bunch of dirt, a bunch of knives at your feet. You'll be walking a path that isn't of God. You'll be walking a path towards Satan. And Satan, he encourages you to. We don't want that, right? Structure. I'm going to shout out to Brother McKinney because if, yeah, if you're watching this video, shout out to Brother McKinney because he taught this lesson on a Wednesday night Bible class. And I really actually enjoyed this. And I'm going to give a little shortened version because I don't want to keep y'all too long. But what is the meaning of structure? It's to construct. Let's see. Let's see. To construct or arrange according to a plan give a pattern or organization to for reference let's go to ephesians chapter 5 verse 16 through 17. make the most of the every opportunity in these evil days don't act thoughtlessly but understand what the lord wants you to do right so i'm going to give you four and this is an acronym called ggdp i'm gonna call it ggpd sorry y'all and the first one is God, right? So before we get to that, I want to break down these verses. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16 through 17. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do, right? God. That's pretty much it. What does God want you to do, right? In the During the lesson, he talked about how, you know, many young adults or those who graduated high school don't know what they want to do with their lives. A lot of them don't know, you know, which direction to go to, whether that's college, getting a job, getting uh, going, you know, to trade school or going off to the military or, you know, going overseas to go play pro basketball. I don't know. Most people, they don't know what they want to do after high school. And I was one of those people. Um, I was always one of those people to where I didn't know what God had for me. And as I talked to God, you know, more about it. And I realized I was like, look. God wants me in a certain place for a certain moment. He wants me in a certain atmosphere and he wants me in a certain place. And listening to God every single moment, every single day, he has opened those doors for me. And we're going to talk about the first G, which is the most important G. And notice how the most important G is the first G, right? Because notice there's two Gs, God. So I want you to turn to Revelations chapter 22. And we're going to begin at verse 13. Well, actually, we're just going to read verse 13. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. What is God? The Alpha and the Omega. He is the greatest of all time. He is the beginning and he is the end. With everything you do, God should be the beginning and the end. Don't bring God in at the end of your decisions. Don't bring God in at the end of your life. Bring God in at all times, the beginning, the middle, the end, the in-betweens. Don't settle for choosing and making a decision based off your own emotions. Don't make emotional decisions. Don't make personal decisions without consulting God, because without consulting the Holy Spirit, the whole, you will be led astray, right? Think of the Holy Spirit as, you know, Let's, let's think of it as, um, what is it called? What is it called? Think of it as sunscreen, right? Sunscreen you put all over your body whenever you go out in the hot elements, as the summer has produced, you will be protected from the sun, right? It gives you, has... You know, the sun gives off rays, right? UR, UL rays, I believe. And because of those rays, if our skin isn't, if our skin can't take in that sunlight, and if we get too much of it, then we'll end up getting sunburn, right? That's, think of the Holy Spirit as like a shield. Think of the Holy Spirit as that stick that Yoda uses to walk, right? Think of it as like a cane. You don't want an older person can't see and they or, or if they can't walk and they have a cane and they use it to poke stuff right 
say you're blind and you use the post up, it allows you to figure out what's in front of you. Think of the Holy Spirit, it's the same thing. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Don't put God at the end. Keep him at all moments in your life. So that's G. What's the other G? Goals, right? Set goals for yourself, set goals for your future, set goals for whatever's coming next. You have to set goals because without, without writing down your goals or implanting your goals in your mind or what you want to do in this life, you will not know what to do. You won't have an idea of what God has set in stone for you. There are many, many different avenues that you could come across that God may want to use you in. Let's think Proverbs chapter 16, verse three. Turn to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. It says, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Let me read that again because I don't think you're hearing me. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Come on, bro. Commit your actions. If, you, if your actions, whatever you want to do in this life, consult God. Right? Though on the front end, it may not seem like you're going anywhere, because believe me, I've been there. There may be something you desire to do, whether that's go to go to school and get your degree, go to this big university, go do go do your thing, right? It may not be in God's plans for you. Jeremiah chapter, but speaking of plans, Jeremiah chapter twenty nine, verse eleven. I'm sure you may have read this verse before. Jeremiah.